What is up? Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video. I am Deshaun Johnson and today what we're going to talk about to kind of let you guys know a little bit about my life, know a little bit more about me, feel that connection, we're going to talk about my DeVry story, one of the most hated for-profit schools that's in existence out there. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I mentioned that DeVry is one of the most hated, but not because I hate DeVry. Like, DeVry was a life-changing moment in my life. It was very critical and very pivotal. Look at me rhyming and super sentences back to back. But for me, the DeVry was, it was very important for me, okay? But before we even get into my DeVry story, why I'm actually, why I even actually attended DeVry, we have to actually go back, all the way back to 2007. And around this time in 2007, I actually was got introduced to a network marketing company called Primerica. And Pri, if you don't know what Primerica is, they're a independent company that deals in, they specialize in selling life insurance and other uh, financial properties, okay? The whole thing, Primerica was important at this time because Primerica opened up my whole mind to this idea of entrepreneurship that I can actually buy back my time. And see, money for me isn't the most important thing. Time is. And if I can get time to just do whatever I want to do, that's always been my ultimate goal. Now, what does is, what is me talking about network marketing have to do with the ride? Which we're going to get there, but this backstory is so critical because it's is relevant to the role that I had to take to even attend the ride. I'm with Primerica right now, and actually, actually I was in Ruston, Louisiana, and I was working at a children's home. I actually, I wasn't working at a children's home, I take that back. I was visiting my folks. Okay, I've already left Louisiana. I was visiting my folks, and I had a, co a former coworker who was celebrating they, they were celebrating some sort of promotion or an advancement that his wife gotten because she had just joined Primerica at the time and they were they went to Chili's, they invited me and I was like, well, what is this, what's going on? You know, if you have any experience with network marketing and they don't really tell you everything up front, you have to kind of just wait. It's kind of this like surprise birthday party all day long, every time. So, you know, like what, what's going on here? Just wait, just come on to, to the party. You'll see, you'll see. You get familiar with a lot of the lingo and talk if you deal with enough network marketing companies and approaches. But anyway, that's what happened. I went and they was just like celebrating because she had just signed up like three or four people and now she was making like an additional 400 to $600 a month based on these people that she signed and the products that they bought. And it just, it really like the excitement, the, the, the energy, the very addictive, infectious energy just rubbed off on me and it just opened up my mind like, I want what she is doing, I want what she has. And it just, Primerica, going through the attempts of becoming part of Primerica just opened up a whole new window of opportunity. So when I got back to Austin, because I was living in Austin, Texas, but I was visiting my folks, uh, they hooked me up with somebody that was actually affiliated with the company. When I, I got hooked up with them, I went to their home offices somewhere in Austin, I, I can't even remember where exactly, and I, I started going to the meetings and started learning more and more about the business. I had a really good mentor, a really good Christian woman, and by the way, I'm a, I'm a Christian myself now, but at the time I actually wasn't, and she, she mentored me not only on the business side, but my spiritual life too. She taught me that you had to become a product of the product. I had to invest in the actual product and start using it myself, which was having me a life insurance policy and start investing in some of the things that Primerica offered so I could speak more authentically about it. And that's, that's what the thing was. So this whole thing about becoming a product of the product is what I actually did. But at first, I wasn't going to even buy life. I just wanted to get people to sign up and they could work for me and I could make money off of them. That's all I actually cared about. If you're trying to actually sell insurance in the state of Texas, you have to get licensed for it, probably as well as anywhere else. So I actually went through the process. I took my test like twice and on the third time I finally passed it. But unfortunately, a, a series of things happened in my life to where I couldn't even do Primerica. And it hurt my heart because I put so much energy and time and focus into trying to become a sales rep, you know, an independent contractor with Primerica. So that just went totally out the window. So my heart was just crushed. That was in 2007. So um, fast forward to like early 2008, I just committed to, I was working at Walgreens at the time. So I was just like, I'm just gonna commit to 
just doing a job I've been doing because I was already working at Walgreens for a, a, several months in 2007 by that time. This guy, I was working one day and this guy approached me in Walgreens and he asked me, if, am I open to opportunities? Am I wanting to become a, you know, a, a business or have my own business? And when he approached me, I was like, oh, thank you, God. This is my <laughs> opportunity to jump back in and get back in the games. I invited him over to my house and he showed me the plan. It was with this company called Financial Destination Incorporated. I actually still have my old FDI literature here, Financial Destination Incorporated, your blueprint to wealth. Actually, I kept this because this was a really nice binder, but yeah, this was the, the network marketing company I actually got into by that gentleman. He became my new mentor because once I left Primerica, I lost my old mentor and now he mentored me greatly and told me a lot about sales, but the actual marketing side was the scary part. and. Actually, the marketing is what made network marketing harder because, you know, trying to really, learning how to like talk to people and, and really ask, learning how to ask questions, which from actually doing that, me being able to ask people questions and trying to become a better listener, I can actually thank that to the network marketing business. That just my time and experience from doing that. But it was tough, like, I would go to malls in my little button up and just walk around assuming that these people who were there at their little kiosk and their little, you know, retail jobs, they hated their job. They wanted to, they wanted what I had. They just didn't know it yet. And little did I know that I didn't know is that they didn't want what I had. But I, I continued to grind because I had the bigger picture, the bigger vision. Internet marketing in 2008 was ramping up like hard. Like people who were jaded and burnt out from network marketing or found it difficult to get leads or to find the right people to join their business, they knew that the future was going to lie in building systems on the internet. So I started like researching this and I came across people like Mike Dillard. That's what his name is. His name is Mike Dillard and he started the magnetic sponsoring system that he had. And I, I bought that. Then I came across people like the renegade network marketer. I think her name was like, I was about to say Ann Rice, the vampire writer, but <laughs> uh, but not, not, it was Antique or whatever her name is, even Pagan. Jonathan Budd and actually he was selling a, a software system for MySpace where you can actually like what would happen is is that this you would put your MySpace profile into the software and it would just ship out all these friend requests to people on autopilot you could just put in this like very um, generic text message that would just offer people and I actually end up using that to holler at girls instead of do business so that software just Kind of went to waste, but and again, it, it didn't. I actually ended up spending a lot of money that year, investing and in trying to learn a lot about internet marketing. I probably roughly spent about $9,000 because I also spent money on Google AdWords. And that's when I started learning about all this lingo, like sales funnels, lead pages, you know, capturing emails, all, all this, you know, verbiage I started to learn. Um, I'm going down this rabbit hole and I'm really not knowing where it's gonna lead. and. I did, and at the time, I, my mentor got into doing like MLM hopping. You know, another shiny, I started to get shiny object syndrome. A new opportunity came about where, you know, my mentor was like, no, we're going to leave FDI. We're going to leave Financial Destination Incorporated. Man, I found this is amazing. This this opportunity right here is just amazing. People just naturally like gravitate. You ain't have to worry about like doing that and everything. Sean selling financial products with financial destination. This is it right here. And I was like, well, well what is it? This company's called Lightyear Wireless and you can make money off of people's phone bills. And I was just like, oh, okay. And, I, and with Financial Destination Incorporated, they sold like financial products where they had a debt restoration program, credit repair. And I was really kind of actually digging those products. Like I was actually getting in the rhythm of using them, but you know, I was just trying to listen to my mentor and be a good mentee and take his word for it. Well, that was a huge mistake because Lightyear Wireless, the thing was, they were, while they were a good company, I learned from experience that it was really difficult to try to convince people to switch over their contracts from them using their cell phones to just over here to this now independent company that nobody knows about. So, but the, the whole selling point was like, you can make money off other people's cell phone bills, you get enough people under you and you know, I, you have to like kind of sell a vision and you, you have to really have this tenacity to really project that to people and I, I just was not there yet at all because I I became a product of the product like canceling out my AT&T contract and getting this Lightyear wireless phone and the phone I actually had was worse than the one that I had when I had my AT&T contract. So it wasn't, 
It was it was a used phone. It just I I was like, you know what? This is not going to work. I just my whole belief system in that was just starting to go downward. You know, so but eventually my um my mentor actually like left me kind of behind and he was he he just decided to go back into real estate. So now I have this light year wireless business and I'm just kind of you know, swinging around trying to figure out what to do. So I, I depended, became more and more dependent on the internet and doing more and more research. And I came across other people like Cedric Harris, who was a magnificent network marketer. I actually had a phone call with him back in 2008. And, you know, he actually gave me some of the best advice. Nobody's going to listen to when I was doing videos. Nobody's going to watch your videos if there's a lot of wind playing in the background. And, at the time, I had filmed the video where there was a bunch of wind playing in the background, so that was priceless advice, nonetheless. So, but in any case, we're getting to the part about DeVry because um, I, I started to actually buy my own website. I bought my own website with GoDaddy.com, and it was it was horrible. It was terrible. The template that like I had some limited plan, and I was only allowed to build like five pages, and I had to. And at the time, GoDaddy would like upsell you on all these little micro transactions. You know, you can get this additional page for an additional ten dollars or whatever. No, no. So I used their basic web builder, and I just remember saying to myself, you know what? <laughs> if I only had the skills to like customize this and you know mess around with this from scratch this would be 10 times better I just it, it I, the seed of wanting to do web design was probably birth just thinking about and dealing with that whole GoDaddy website from DeshaunJohnson.com now I'm using WordPress DeshaunJohnson.com is hosted on Just Host wonderful hosting company now I suggest that I leave a link in the description below but if you're looking for good web hosting Just Host is it um, subsidiary of Bluehost but in any case that, besides the point so I'm using this horrible website and I'm just like, uh, and I, I hated sending people to it, but it's all I had at the time. So I'm, I'm constantly doing more and more research and I come across Darren Ross's uh, pro blogger blog and you know, he had some really good, you know, content on there that actually convinced me I should start a blog. And I actually, I got back into actual writing where I figured I'll just start creating and writing content about network marketing and maybe drawing people that way. And I eventually just kind of left let network marketing along and focused all my attention now on building some sort of internet business and I actually invested in the blog I actually got a blogger account which was free and I actually started writing about what I liked which was NES games my first blog article was Double Dragon 2 and I was actually trying to sell Double Dragon 2 games through Amazon's affiliate program which at the time they didn't have the like 90 day sales cap where you have to sell something in 90 days otherwise they just kind of forfeit your account that wasn't even like that then this was back in now 2009 so I started doing that and I actually remember on the pro blogger not pro blogger the blogger account where I wanted to adjust the header and I had to actually go in and like mess with the code to adjust the header I think I went into the developer tools or something just playing around and I was just remembering I had this magic moment where I was like, this is so cool, like, wow, to like manipulate something in real time and it makes this change where everybody else could see. I was like, this was, it just blew me away. I, I played around with it, but eventually I even left blogging alone and I just, I don't know, I just I, I, I just went back to the traditional way of working, getting, working at my little job, being an assistant manager at Walgreens and just doing that. Fast forward, 2010, 2011, I get married. We're, we're taking a trip to Florida and I just figured like, I got tired of working at Walgreens and I'm like, I need to get a trade and not just some trade, a trade that's about to be relevant in the future, but allowed me to exercise and express my creativity just as much as writing did. And I thought coding, doing that, I just remember back to hating ugly websites and that whole like blogger moment where I had to adjust the code into the header that really like that really planted a seed with me and I was like you know what I'm gonna look into web design and development that's what I'm going to try to do and so me and my wife we talked about it we both agreed I applied to DeVry because I had a friend who was you know he was moving going back and forth to San Antonio he was trying to create a technology product and I was telling him I wanted to get in web design development. He was like, you probably need to, you know, have some schooling for that or something. You know, and that, that I guess that kind of planted a seed 
because I didn't know which which direction to go. Uh, even if I now knowing what I know now, knowing that you don't really need college, you just need to like really have a good strong work ethic, show your work, good portfolio, that'll get you in. But still, my time at the Rod wouldn't change for the world. So, so 2011, we're in Florida and we're at this water park. Before then, I had applied online to get into the ride and I got a call back from the admissions officer and you know she told me that you know I got in and I my financial aid went through and boom I was I was enrolled into the ride and from 2011 to 2013 I got a two-year associate's degree which is all the school and I really needed and what the ride did for me it put me in front of a lot of people who was just as passionate and wanted what I wanted um, in the same room and and that that was really huge people I can actually talked to was speaking the same language in terms of web graphic design and it was it was just a it was a good time for me and I took classes online first set of classes I did was regarding Adobe Illustrator Adobe Dreamweaver Adobe Flash the whole creative Adobe Creative Suites that's the tools that we use and I haven't I haven't like went back to anything I haven't done anything else I mean outside of using photo P and Pixlr and maybe some other online photo editing tools but that's the primary suite of tools that I use right now in order to conduct a lot of my web design and development. I took online classes, I learned a lot about visual hierarchy, you know, the golden ratio, creating little simple websites in Flash, because Flash has, hadn't just, you know, been omitted from the web the web at all. This was all before a time where, you know, Steve Jobs was on his kick, like, you know, off with the head of Flash, like, let's kill Flash completely off, Flash just drains and blah, blah, blah. This was, you know, like 2011, 2012, and I don't know, Flash is still good to learn if you're trying to do little simple animations. That's what I would actually say in terms of if you're using Flash, but DeVry was, man, it was it was a good platform. It was, it was expensive, but I still wouldn't, you know, change anything at all in terms of going. I got me a, a student discount for Adobe Creative Suite, so I, I still have on to that for my Mac. Now, though I learned a lot using Adobe Creative Suite, the main thing I wanted to get into DeVry to do was to actually get into the coding side. And when I actually signed up for the curriculum, I, that's what I thought I was actually getting into. I thought web graphic design, that whole, two-year program was going to cover that but it, it, it didn't so it was just I was like oh okay I got into the wrong side but it's it's all good a lot of the HTML and CSS I had to kind of learn on my own um, but the being exposed to the Adobe Creative Suites and, and using that was just a, such a big help and a lot of the projects they had us do was they were challenging they were very challenging I learned a lot from them so yeah, it, that was, I think that was the, the biggest thing that, you know, I was like, oh man, I picked the wrong like major, but still very much so related. Now with DeVry, many may ask, you know, did DeVry help me find a web design development job? And here's the truth with me. So right now, even as I make this video, I'm a public education teacher. And when I was going to school, that's what I was actually trying to get into. And I guess I put my, you know, I have a degree in English. I, have a, I went to Grandland State University for six years from 2001 to 2006, got a two-year degree in criminal justice, and got a, a bachelor's in English. And many of y'all are like, well, that was a waste of time. Well, maybe hold on there. Like, maybe for you, you may see it that way. But for me, I was good at English. Writing is my passion. That's what I majored in. That's what I chose to do. And... If I, I will say this, if I was smart enough, I would have just went on ahead and just started writing and trying to build some sort of writing career, but I'm not writing for other, like, you know, people and all this other stuff. I just, I wasn't passionate about that at the time. Now I love creating content. Sure, I wouldn't have any problem doing that now, but at the time I just wasn't. So for me, it's no big deal, but I, I put my English degree to use in terms of becoming a teacher, falling into that stereotype that everybody has, what you go do with an English degree? like. I, I became a teacher, but I'm very passionate about teaching as well. The public education, the kids that are in public education, they don't bother me. I actually get along with a lot of my students. So, so yeah, at that time, I was trying to actually become a teacher, and this was 2013. That last year, I was in DeVry, and I just didn't, I didn't bother trying to get with a actual tech company and trying to get hired into the web design industry because of that reason. And I just decided to like, I'll just take on some projects on the side and just continue to grow and get better. And in 2014, I created the brand DLJ Works, which DLJ is for my name, Deshaun Lanier Johnson and Works, which I call the triple entendre. Works meaning portfolio, 
I will work for you and just having a whole, well, the portfolio body of work. Ah, the third piece, and I don't forget the third piece. Works, portfolio, um, it just works. I worked hard. Work can, it works just meaning a whole plethora of things. So that's what, that's what DLJ Works is, okay? Just that whole gear is about just me working for you and it just working as a system. So that's, that's why I started that and I operate under that. Now I was taking on projects for free and trying to get my skills up. 2016, came across WordPress. I took on a client who wanted to manage their own website. So I had to find a, a perfect platform for them. Did research, WordPress came up. And at first it was difficult to learn, but once you master it, WordPress is very rewarding. I, I would not, I have a love relationship, not even a love hate, I just have a love relationship with WordPress. So that's been pretty much my web design development journey. And yeah, I've just been freelancing on the side, taking on projects and, you know, working out different deals with the clients that I'm coming in contact with. So the ride was a, a key point in my life. It was that transitional moment to where I was able to start picking up a trade and, and go down that pathway to where now I have a set of skills that will best serve not only myself, but my family and create other opportunities as well. So. Thank you guys for watching this very long video. I hope you enjoyed the story. I would love some feedback on my presentation. Did you find me boring, too talkative? What can I do better in terms of actually telling stories like this? Leave a comment below. I love to have a conversation with you. That is going to be it. Subscribe to my mailing list on dljworks.com. Thank you again for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. God bless y'all. Underneath the video, go to the description, click the show more or read more area, click on the DLJ Works link listed here, and sign up to the mailing list to get content updates and exclusive service discounts and freebies from DLJ Works, and also become exclusive to content not available anywhere else.